roads. The Bible says is not an adequate starting point or returning point for many adults. For many adults, it's not enough for me to say to you, okay, now I'm going to restart your faith. Now the Bible says, you're going to go, okay, I already did that. I already did the Bible says. I grew up with the Bible says, and I know what the Bible says. But let me tell you about my job. Let me tell you about my divorce. Let me tell you about my children. Let me tell you about my unanswered prayer. Andy, if if we're going to try to restart my faith by starting with the Bible says, the Bible teaches, not interested. So the seminaries are just now catching up to teach pastors that they've got to teach apologetics. That's what this is, evidence that it's true. So people who have questions can get them answered before they're going to believe what the Bible says. Hondo! 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 Welcome back to the Hondo channel. And I suppose, I suppose we can talk about Andy Stanley again. So apparently Andy Stanley is causing a stir. I can't find the sermon on YouTube. Someone must have, he must have deleted it. But uh, he says that trusting in the Bible is not adequate, not adequate for life. The Bible is not scientific. As you know, Andy Stanley studied under Norman Geisler. You guys know I don't like Norman Geisler as a uh, as a theologian. He wasn't a theologian. He was a philosopher and an apologist. And so, why do I mention Norman Geisler? Well, this whole notion that the Bible is not adequate it comes from Norman Geisler, and Norman Geisler was. Uh, was a big Thomas. I believe in. He he agreed with Thomas Aquinas' notions of justifying Scripture through philosophical reasoning, explaining that God exists through philosophical reasoning. How does that relate to Andy Stanley? I'll get to that eventually. And um, also Frank Turek was. Uh, uh, was and is a big Norma Geisler disciple. And Frank Turek says it explicitly that we need rational, meaning philosophical reason, rational and scientific evidence to believe in the scripture. And so apologetics is vital in the church today because it strengthens the faith. And, and that people fall away because they don't have these kinds of things. They don't have rational data. And he got this from Norman Geisler. Rabbi Zacharias said the same thing. Rabbi Zacharias was also a big Norman Geisler disciple. He studied under Norman Geisler. Uh, Norman Geisler was an apologist, philosopher, and Rabbi Zacharias learned a lot of stuff from him. And so in Rabbi Zacharias's book, he says that Scripture is not adequate. This is the same thing that uh, that Andy Stanley was saying. But Zechariah said this back in um, 1994. And R.C. Sproul, who is a big Thomist, I like R.C. Sproul. I agree with just about everything that he says, except this stuff on apologetics. But Rabbi Zechariah, he was very sly, not as direct as as Andy Stanley. And this is what uh, Rabbi Zechariah says. Talking about the young people who come to him and ask him for answers and how to, how to deal with unbelievers and all the questions that they, that they have and all the criticism they get, that they get. I have heard questions that are deep and complex, sometimes coming even from young teenagers, but the solutions I have heard most often offered to them are quite frankly superficial and simple. Many frustrated young people have expressed all I hear my parents or preachers saying is that the Bible says this is so and therefore it is so and that, that is the only answer necessary to give. What they do not realize the young person passionately pleads is that when I begin my answer at school or in the university with the Bible says my answer is immediately dismissed 
as irrelevant. And in some instances, I am torn to bits. And so Rabbi Zacharias, he begins his book here by saying that we cannot rely solely on the Bible. We need ap apologetics, we need philosophy, we need evidence before we can trust in God. Or as Paul said, we walk by faith and not by sight. Sight being the things that we understand with our human intellect, with our human reason, with our eyes, with our physical senses, the conclusions we come to apart from God, that is sight. And faith, well, faith being not sight, faith is blind. But the apologists, they don't like that. And this is also what Zechariah says. How can one possibly prescribe a moral principle or the lack of one, meaning scripture, to believe in scripture or not, without justifying the authority of the source, the authority of God, meaning he believes he needs to justify, to support the authority of God himself with his book, with his little book. And this is what Andy Stanley is saying. The Bible says to use that terminology, to use that justification, which is faith, which is just faith, is not good enough. I mean, what do we have if we don't have faith? All we have is our own human reasoning, our own minds, our own intellect, our own knowledge. We are not saved, if that's all we have. If all we have is what we know and what we understand there's no salvation even if you say our faith rests on human understanding and human reason and human human discovered data the foundation is the same it is still just nonsense it is as christ said sand you rest on sand your house is built on sand and what did he say? He said, my words are the rock. Not your data, not what you see, not what you understand. And even in Hebrews 6, God swears by himself. Not by data, not by science, not by human reason. And not even by the memory of things that he has done before. This is Hebrews uh, 6.12. For as he could swear by no one greater or even no greater thing, there's no one greater and there is no greater thing than God. Hebrews 6. six thirteen. For when God made the promise to Abraham, since he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you. And I will surely multiply you. That is his promise to Abraham. Did Abraham have any evidence for that? Abraham was just some, some nobody out in the desert. He had wandered out there because God told him. What evidence did he have that this was going to happen? He had no evidence to even travel out there. He was, he was some pagan living with his father. And God grabbed him. God just grabbed him and called him and made it clear to him this is what i want and this is what i'm going to do what evidence did abraham have but to get back to andy stanley if you believe that scripture needs your reason your evidence your scientific data your philosophy your kalam cosmological argument if you believe that god or scripture need these things before you'll believe in them then you become the authority to decide whether scripture is true or not. And this is exactly what Andy Stanley has done. He is the authority. Whatever he thinks, whatever he believes, whatever makes sense to him, that is the authority that he uses to determine what is true or not. Not faith in what the Bible says. And this is what the Bible teaches all throughout. We don't live by what we see, by what makes sense, by what we understand. 
we live by faith. This is what Paul said. The righteous will live by faith. God made the promise to Abraham. It made no sense to him that he was going to be the father of nations. It made no sense. But he believed it. And that was, that was his righteousness. And this is what Andy Stanley is saying. He's saying, as he talks about being an adult, that faith is not good enough when you're an adult. Or what did Jesus say? Come to me as children. Mean humble and faithful. We believe, not because everything makes sense, but because God is our Father and we put our trust in Him. But if we believe that we can decide what is true, then we're the same as the Catholics. And the Catholics with all their tradition, and of course the pagans and the atheists, everyone else believes what makes sense, what they see with their eyes. And that's, that's the problem. <clears throat> but it's amazing that they didn't call out Rabbi Zacharias and, you know, especially R.C. Sproul. I don't understand that. And he had a big debate with um, Greg Bonson, who's a presuppositionalist, meaning men who trust the Bible first. The basis for what we believe is not science. The basis for what we believe is not logic. Norman Geisler said this. He said, the basis for all thinking is logic, so the basis for all thinking about God is logic. That is not the basis for all thinking. The basis for what we think are the things that we presuppose, the things that we believe in our hearts. Do we believe that we are sinful? Do we believe that God is true? Do we believe that Scripture is true? Or do we believe that our eyes tell us the truth, our senses tell us the truth? Or do we believe do we believe that we are wise enough to determine what is true, or do we trust in God's word? And so that was Norman Geisler, that is uh, Frank Turek, Andy Stanley, um, Rabbi Zacharias, basically every Armenian minister. They believe what makes sense to them. They believe that their mind is the authority, that their reason is the authority, and the things that make sense to them are the authority and so this is why they deny um, the sovereignty of God because it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense that God is sovereign over everything even over us he has decreed everything even over everything that we do and say over all of creation over all of history because it doesn't make sense but uh, again the core of this is the core of Andy Stanley's belief, is that he is the authority, not scripture. What makes sense to him in his mind, in his senses, whether it be science, whether it be reason, whether it be his own experience, his emotions, these are the things that tell him what is true, not scripture. He seems to make references to difficult things that happen to people. And so this is why they can't trust scripture. Because scripture says, trust Trust, 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 blessing and faith. And blessing comes through faith and, and these kinds of things. But all he sees is pain and suffering. We don't, we don't receive all the blessing. Some of us, we receive parts of the blessing here in our lives. Some of us receive a lot of suffering. But the redemption... Is spiritual it is eternal it is not material it is not physical it is not temporal <clears throat> these are things that we can't see that we don't see now but we will see in the future but of course the Bible teaches these things but since it doesn't make sense he can't believe it 